Inshallah, just like yesterday, we will commence with a short recitation from the Quran for purposes of invoking the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْجُونَ لِقَاءَنَا لَوْلَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْنَا الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَوْ نَرَى رَبَّنَا لَقَدْ اسْتَكْبَرُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ وَعَتَوْا عُتُوًّا كَبِيرًا يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَ الْمَلَائِكَةَ لَا بُشْرَى يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْمُجْرِمِينَ وَيَقُولُونَ حِجْرًا مَحْجُورًا وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا أصحاب الجنة يومئذ خير مستقرا وأحسن مقيلا ويوم تشقق السماء بالغمام ونزل الملائكة تنزيلا الملك يومئذ الحق قل الرحمن وكان يوما على الكافرين عسيرا ويوم يعض الظالم على يديه يقول يا ليتني اتخذت مع الرسول سبيلا يا ويلتى ليتني لم اتخذ فلانا خليلا لقد أضلني عن الذكر بعد إذ جاءني وكان الشيطان للإنسان خذولا وقال الرسول يا رب إن قوم اتخذوا هذا القرآن مهجورا وكذلك جعلنا لكل نبي عدوا من المجرمين وكفى بربك هاديا ونصيرا وقال الذين كفروا لولا نزل عليه القرآن جملة واحدة كذلك لنثبت به فؤادك ورتلناه ترتيلا ولا يأتونك بمثل إلا جئناك بالحق وأحسن تفسيرا الذين يحشرون على وجوههم إلى جهنم أولئك شر مكانا وأضل سميلا صدق الله العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most gracious, most merciful All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
creator, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer of one and all. Complete blessings and salutations upon the masterpiece, the one who brought us all the goodness that we have, the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to be the messenger of this particular ummah. May Allah's blessings be upon him and all those whom Allah chose to be his companions and his followers. May Allah bless us all as well and our offspring, those to come up to the last day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast on this particular goodness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from every form of evil. Honored ulama and beloved brothers and sisters, we meet once again asking Allah to have mercy upon us and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a lesson. The idea of my visit to Sri Lanka is to share the goodness of this religion in a way that we become better human beings. We become better people and better Muslims and we understand our religion for indeed having studied several religions maybe not in the depth of those who are following those religions but to a certain extent I guarantee you that Islam has much more teachings than any other religion. Just like the examples I have given in the past and remember these examples we give are only to bring it close to our mind. Sometimes and most of the time they do not fit exactly 100% but they are only to bring them or to bring the I, the point being made closer to our minds. I have given the example of government schools and private schools in my part of the world. The government schools are good, we are not saying they are bad, but they don't have as many rules and regulations as private schools mostly. And you find with the private schools they have so many rules and regulations Nobody gets fed up of those rules and regulations. They know the more the rules, the better the school. I want to say, the more the rules, the better the religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that understanding. So let us never ever think to ourselves that Islam has a lot of rules. Too many rules, too many regulations, it is difficult for us. No, it makes us better people. This evening we are discussing the issue or the topic of arrogance and pride and the diseases of the heart. The worst disease that the heart can have is the disease of arrogance and pride. Firstly, we need to know what is the meaning of arrogance and what is the meaning of pride. Then we also need to know what does it lead to. Because pride and arrogance, sometimes a person has these qualities in their heart without knowing. And sometimes we miscalculate and misjudge that others are proud and arrogant without knowing what the meaning of pride and arrogance is. Then when we do not seek remedy for this habit or quality of the heart, it begins to show in our actions and it begins to show in our physical life and it destroys us completely. So it is important for us to know how serious the crime is but firstly we need to diagnose and we will not be able to diagnose without knowledge of symptoms and the knowledge of symptoms will not come to us until we do not have a definition of what arrogance is. So let us commence without wasting time. The Prophet ﷺ once asked his companions that do you know what is pride? Do you know what is pride? He explained to them, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon them all. He explained to them that pride, in fact the exact narration is as follows, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال حبة من خردل من كبر The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, he will not enter paradise in whose heart is even a mustard seed's weight of pride. He will not enter paradise. He will need to go to hellfire first in order to burn off all the bad qualities of the heart that he has and then he will be able to enter paradise only after that. But if someone has a mustard seed weight worth of pride in their heart, they will not enter paradise. No room for them. So the, the companions asked the Prophet O oh Messenger, may peace be upon him, O oh Messenger, we love to wear good clothing. 
and to have good conveyance, which means the horses that we ride. In today's time, it would probably mean the vehicles that you have, and the clothing we have, and the material item we have. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that is not pride. To wear the best clothing is not pride. It is in fact confirming Allah's gift upon you. And I am diverting to another narration. There was once a man who walked in to the gathering where the Prophet, peace be upon him, was present. And he was wearing tatty clothing. Tatty meaning it had some patches and so on. Now the messenger, peace be upon him, asked him that why are you wearing tatty clothing? What do you have? What has Allah blessed you with in terms of wealth? He said, I have lots of livestock. You know, sheep and goats and so on, livestock. So the Prophet ﷺ sent him away and told him, wear something which will show that Allah has given you. Don't be a rich man wearing poor clothing. The narration is, لِيَظْهَرْ أَثَرَ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ Let the ni'mah of Allah and the gift of Allah upon you be seen upon you. So that has nothing to do with pride. When you wear the best clothing, you have the best vehicle, mashallah, with good mag wheels which will hold the road, and you have, you know, a few extras which make your car shine, you want to wash it every day and move around with a good vehicle, that singularly does not make you proud. Which means, on its own, that does not constitute pride. You can have the best clothing, you can wear top clothing, good watch, nice pen, very lovely sunglasses, everything can be perfect, lovely shoes, everything good, mashallah. That, that, that on its own does not make you proud or arrogant. And you can have the best house with beautiful cutlery and nice facility, air conditioning and all that. That on its own does not make you proud. So what is pride? The Prophet ﷺ continues. He says, do you know what is pride? It is Remember these two things and don't ever forget them. Pride is two things in Islam. According to Sharia, the definition of pride is two things. To reject the truth and to reject justice. That is the first thing. To reject the truth. That would include justice and to reject everything that is correct. That is pride. Number one. The second quality is to despise people, to think lowly of people, to treat people in a very cheap way, that is pride. So these are the two things. Now we want to look into our lives. Do we reject the truth when it comes to us, male and female? The truth is what Allah has revealed. The truth in dispute is what we know the truth is. Many times people know what the truth is, but they deny it. To deny the truth is called pride. And Allah says, if you have a mustard's weight of that in your heart, you do not have a place in paradise yet. You need to go first via and come. I heard lately that there are now flights directly from Johannesburg to Colombo, mashallah. Next time it will be easier for us to travel. When you are coming via, via, believe me, it's not a joke. It's long hours and suffering in order to come to a place like this. Some people ask me, where are you going? I said, Sri Lanka. Where is that? Some people think it is in South America. Whilst others are thinking maybe it is near Malaysia, Far East Asia. The truth is, no matter where it is, for the purpose of deen, we will go. And remember one thing, as I said, and I want to make this clear, my purpose of being here is solely to make me a better person and you, a better Muslim, to try and become better Muslims. It is impossible to be a better Muslim without knowing what your religion teaches you and without going through it. Sometimes we know some of these points, but sometimes we need to be reminded, as Allah says in the Quran, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِن Remind, continue reminding for the reminding will benefit those who truly believe. Every day your father tells you, please, don't be late for school. Please, come back on time. Please, eat properly. They tell you to eat properly even when you are eating properly in order to ensure perfection. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Don't be upset when someone corrects you even when you are right. We have an attitude nowadays human beings. If someone says, brother, 
walk straight. You say, what, am I walking crooked? Why do we need to say that? Someone says, brother, make sure you are eating with your right hand. Does it look like I'm eating with my left? That type of attitude a true mu'min should not have. When our parents are telling us something, when others are telling us something, we should not presume that they are telling us because we are already on the wrong side. Sometimes they are reminding us to cheer us on on the good path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast. So Allah says keep on reminding. These reminders are there to make us better people. Remember, what was the first crime committed? It's a question asked. What was the first crime committed? And who was it committed by? Let me answer the second one before the first. It was committed by Iblis. Iblis who is the Adam, or should I say the head, the, the, the leader, the first of those who are rebellious. Shayateen, the, the father of the Shayateen, the head of all the devils, the head of all the Satans. He was Iblis. He committed the crime. And what was the crime? It was Al-Kibru. Kibr meaning pride, haughtiness, the feeling that I am better. That is part of despising people. When you think cheap of people, you will reject them. If for example, every day we look at someone and spit in his direction, may Allah protect us. One day, one day, when he has developed some scientific discovery that he has found and developed a, an apparatus that is very very grand we might say no not him it must be someone else automatically why because we are used to despising him every day we are used to thinking very low of him this is why Allah says we are equal listen to the hadith An-nasu asnanil misht. people are equal like the teeth of a comb you cannot comb your hair with one tooth this way, one that way, one tall, one short, one big, one small. What will happen to your hair? You won't be able to comb it. So people are equal like the teeth of a comb. Here you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning us. He says, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ when we, or remember when we instructed the angels to prostrate to Adam, when we created man, they all prostrated besides Iblis. Abba was takbara wa kana min al kafirin. He refused and he was proud and arrogant. Istikbar. He chose to be haughty, arrogant. And as a result, he became one of the kuffar. Kuffar meaning he disbelieved in Allah. He disbelieved. Because when Allah instructs you, and you reject the instruction, there are two things that happened here with Iblis. Both the qualities we mentioned of pride are present in what we spoke about Iblis. Firstly, he refused to listen to the haqq, to the truth from Allah, knowing that Allah is the creator. When Allah was the creator and the instruction came, it was his duty to surrender to it. But he chose not to do that. Secondly, he despised Adam and he said, who is this? Who is this? Why must I prostrate to him? For what? He is worse than me. Look what he says in another verse in the Quran in Surah Al-A'raf. He says, Ana khayrum minhu. خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن طِينٍ I am better than him. You created me from fire and him from soil. I, my, I burn above. He settles on the ground at the bottom. If you take fire, you light it, and you put soil or dust on the other side, dust remains on the ground. But what will happen to the fire? It begins to blow up and it, the, the, the flame actually goes in the upward direction. So this was used by Iblis to justify I am better. He had both of these bad qualities in him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this. And this is why we say the person who has the quality of despising others and thinking cheap of others, either because they are darker in complexion or because they are not that good looking, or because they are not that wealthy, 
or because they don't have that much knowledge, or because their education is not that much. If we think lowly of them, we have in us a quality of the devil and Satan himself. If we do not check the quality and do not remove it, and it requires a great effort to remove the quality, there may be a day that will come when we will regret. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So even if people are working for you, we treat them as equals. We might have to be above them to issue instructions, but with respect. When there are people working underneath you, or should I say under your authority, it is important for you to instruct them what to do, because you are the boss. There is no harm for you to be the boss, but instruct them with respect. Don't treat them in a cheap manner. You also need to call them sir, how they call you sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. No problem. Treat them with good words. My brother in Islam, if he is a Muslim, my brother, today we need to achieve this. Please. It is a deadline. We must achieve it. If you will not be able to achieve it today, there may be a penalization here. Look at how hard the words are. But they are polite in the sense that firm but polite. We are firm because we have a deadline to meet for our company. But we are polite because... We are speaking to a human being. If Allah wanted, the tables could have been the other way around. Maybe your children might be working for his children the other way around. It can happen. Or later on, we need to understand. Let us commence or start this trend of respecting one another and understanding that if Allah wanted, we could have been in the other's shoes. And inshallah, we will be assisted in solving the matter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when we choose people, to be the highest, we ensure that they don't have in them quality of pride and haughtiness. No quality of pride. They will never reject the truth. They will not be too proud to accept what is right. They will not want to be higher than where Allah has put them. They will not seek to degrade others. No. So who are the best of people? If I were to ask you who is the best person to have existed in this dunya, what is the one single name we can say? We can say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after that we have the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have five of them, five of the highest. They are known as Ulul Azmi min al rusul Ulul Azm are the five who are higher than the rest of them. Right at the top we have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thereafter we have Listen to the verse. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ مِيثَاقَهُمْ وَمِنْكَ وَمِنْ نُوحٍ وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى بْنِ مَرْيَمِ Those are the other four. So we have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we have Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa and Isa. May peace be upon all of them. So those were the highest of the lot. The, all the messengers were high, but these were higher than the others according to what we have learned in the Qur'an. But Allah says they were not proud, they were not arrogant. Look at Muhammad, may peace be upon him. He was an orphan child, so he knows what it is like to be without a mother and a father. Then he was looked after by his grandfather. Then he was looked after by his uncle. And Allah blessed him with prophethood. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah blessed him with prophethood. And this is hope for those who are young and who might be orphans. And those who are downtrodden, don't worry. It is those type of people whom Allah chooses to go far beyond the others. When Allah chooses someone, it does not necessarily mean he gives them the dunya. Sometimes he gives them deen, he gives them religion. Not necessarily the worldly material life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, Regarding Isa, or Jesus may peace be upon him, in Surah An-Nisa. Jesus may peace be upon him, was not too proud and arrogant to accept the fact that he was a mere slave of Allah. He was a worshipper of Allah. And even the angels, they are not too arrogant and proud to deny the fact that they are, mess they are messengers of Allah. 
and they are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to use the word slave is not easy. But we are all slaves of Allah. We must not be too proud to confirm and admit that we are the slaves of Allah. Our hands and our feet and our necks are in total control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If He wants, He can paralyze us. If He wants, He can grant us good life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. So, if these people who were very high were not arrogant, they did not deny the fact that they too were the slaves of Allah. Who are we? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about some of the qualities that a person with pride will have. You will pick it up in yourself if you have pride with these qualities. And you may pick up from others if you need to be careful and warned because we need good company. We must not be in the company of those who are haughty and those who have pride because when the punishment comes, it may overtake all of us. We need to be simple down to earth people. People who are alhamdulillah satisfied with whatever Allah has given them. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf. وَالَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا عَنْهَا أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ those people who belied our signs and they were too arrogant to accept them. What that means is when the signs of Allah, when the verses of Allah are read to us, we must not be too arrogant to surrender to the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes you have verses that are read to you or the laws of Islam are made clear to you and sometimes you find a person saying, no, I disagree with that. Astaghfirullah. How can you disagree with what your Creator is telling you? You cannot disagree with that. You might want to say that, look, I am weak. Maybe I am not yet able to adopt this, but I admit that it is the truth. That is still a weakness. But it is easier to deal with that than to deal with a person who is in denial. We take, for example, there are many rulings. I don't know there is one that has just come to my mind now. Let us say the issue of polygamy, for example. Sometimes you have women folk who say that, no, this is not the law of Allah. You know, we disagree with it. If that is the case, they are throwing one verse of the Qur'an away. If we throw one verse of the Qur'an away, what will happen to us? What is going to be our condition? That is pride. That is arrogance. That is rejection of the truth. This is what we are talking about. Even if you are wearing the simplest of clothing, but you have denied a verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is pride. This is a quality of Iblis. Rather, if a person is weak and they say that, look, I am weak, I might not be able to live in this situation, but I do admit it is the law of Allah. They have a problem and a weakness which is easier to deal with than one who denies the verse in totality. I hope we are following here. So let us understand. Let me give you another example. There are several places in the Quran where Allah has prohibited music. And I'm going to say this loud and clear, though I know there is a growing number of people who are trying to debate it, but that is also a prophecy of the Prophet, peace be upon him, where he says, Ya'ti ala nasi zamanun, a time will come, and this hadith is in Sahih al Bukhari, a time will come when people yastahillun al hira wal harira wal ma'azif. It is a long hadith where the Prophet says there will come a time when people will consider permissible some things that are prohibited, such as adultery. They will use different names, they will call it mut'a, they will call it something else, temporary marriage and what have you. They will name it with different names and consider it permissible. And al-harira means they will consider the wearing of feminine clothing for males permissible and male clothing for females permissible. And they will say there is nothing wrong with this. Well, ma'azif, ma'azif meaning musical instruments, they will consider them permissible. Now, that is a narration of the Prophet ﷺ, but there are verses in the Qur'an which prove that music is haram. If you have a person who says, look, I listen to music, but I know it's haram, make dua for me that I leave it. That is bad, but it is not as bad as a person who says, no, nothing wrong with music. 
Are you looking at the difference here? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our understanding. And sometimes we have a verse that is clearly read to us. We know we understand it according to the Arabic language of the Arabs. And we understand it according to how the companions have understood it. But still we find ourselves denying to say, no, that is not what it means. This is what it means. It has a different meaning. Where we come across the globe 1400 years down the line, thinking we are the first people to discover the meaning of this verse. How dare, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in this regard to say, those people who deny the truth, our verses, and they are arrogant because of that, they will enter hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. Then Allah says, there are certain people who are arrogant and haughty. What is a habit of theirs? They want to control everything. Everything must happen according to you. This quality comes in us in our own circle sometimes. Sometimes in the house we have a habit. Everything must happen according to what I want. So we say, no, do this. Someone says, but please, ah, uh, do this. But you know, no, don't say but. Why? What type of attitude is this? That is arrogance. Or it is the beginning of arrogance. Why do you want everything your way? You must listen to other people. One of the signs of arrogance is when people don't want to listen to what others have to say. Sometimes you might have an opinion and others have a better opinion. Subhanallah, look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our masterpiece, the one whom we follow. When it came to the battle of Badr, one of the companions asked him, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have we decided to camp in this place because it is revelation from the heaven that was instructing you for us to camp here, or is it your own opinion? So he said, no, it is my own opinion. So the Sahabi said, if it is your own opinion, I have a suggestion. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what is your suggestion? Look at how down to earth he was. He was the leader, he was the best of creation, he was assisted by Jibreel, he was given revelation by Allah, and still he said, what is your opinion? And then he was told, if it is your own view, then I think let us stop on this ground which is rocky, because here we have stopped in the sandy land, and if it rains it will become all muddy and our horses will get stuck, when we stop at the rocky land and it rains, our horses will still begin to move and here there is water, so we will be able to block the water from the enemy. What did Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? He instructed the army to move into that place. Amazing. He changed his whole opinion because of the saying of one companion. It was easy for Allah to tell him from the beginning to go there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to learn a lesson that look, the one who knew he was the best, he still listened to other people's opinions and where they were correct, he still gave it up and he went there. How many of us are ready to listen to the opinions of others whom we know are below us? We are not talking of someone senior, someone below us. Subhanallah. Look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the enemy came to attack in Medina, he asked his companions of a plan. Many of them suggested many things. What did he do? He listened to all the opinions. Then he came up with the opinion of Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu. And he dug a trench round parts of Medina Munawwara. Hence it is known as the battle of the trench. Whose opinion was that? It was one of the companions. How did he get it? By listening. So one of the, one of the qualities that show the beginning of arrogance in a person, and sometimes it can lead to full-blown arrogance, is when we are not prepared to listen to the views of others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in this regard. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there are certain people who want to control absolutely everything. قال الملأ الذين استكبروا من قومه للذين استضعفوا لمن آمن منهم أتعلمون أن صالحا مرسل من ربه. This is a very deep conversation that Allah subhanahu wa taala has in Surah Al-A'raf, where He is making mention of the people of Salih عليه الصلاة والسلام and how they were people who followed Him. And there were others who were very arrogant and very haughty. They told those who followed Salih, may peace be upon him, that 
do you know that this is the messenger? We are denying this message. Why are you not also denying the message by following us? There were some who followed them, some who didn't. Those who believed in the message of Salih, may peace be upon him, they were saved. They didn't follow those who were instructing them. Normally, people think that money spoils you. When you have lots of wealth, it makes you bad. That is not true. In Islam, you can have lots of wealth, but still you can be down to earth. Money does not spoil you. It is not money that spoils you. In my opinion, money only gives you the opportunity to show who you always were. When you didn't have money, maybe you had very bad qualities, so you couldn't show those bad qualities because you didn't have money. You had to go to work and say, yes, boss. No problem, boss. Because you know at the end of the year or month, I needed 500,000 rupees salary. If I didn't say, yes, boss, it was okay. But in your mind, you said, ah, who is this boss? I wish I could give him one blow on his face. You know? But that you can only keep it in your mind. But the day you get money, you don't need to keep it in your mind anymore. You can show your true colors. So if someone was good before they had money, they will remain good, inshallah, on condition that that goodness was from the heart. If the heart is good, believe me, there is nothing else you need to worry about. That is also in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ لَمُضْغَةً إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ Definitely, in the body there is a piece of flesh. If it is pure and good, the whole body will be pure and good. And if it is bad and corrupt, the whole body will be bad and corrupt. That is the heart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how there are people who sometimes their wealth makes them show the quality of arrogance that they have always had. And they become haughty. Take a look at the question. When Hercules asked a question to Abu Sufyan about the Prophet, peace be upon him, the time when Abu Sufyan was not yet a Muslim and he had traveled to that region, he asked him, tell me, who are the general followers of this Prophet that, that is claiming to be a Prophet? Are they the rich or the poor? Abu Sufyan said, the bulk of them are the poor. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Amazing how... We, are, we need to learn something from this. Sometimes when we have been given material items from Allah, like wealth and something very big, sometimes we are in a comfort zone. We fear that if we are to change something in our lives, we might lose the wealth we have. We might lose the friends and the circles we have. We might lose the clout we have. So that is why sometimes we don't grow a beard. Because we never had a beard. We fear if I grow a beard, president is not going to greet me anymore. So it can happen sometimes. And sometimes we fear, like the women folk might fear, those who are very influential, that if I wear a scarf on my head or if I go to the next level and if I want to cover my face or something, then I think I might lose some of my friends. Wallahi, that is the beginning where shaitan is trying to put you in a trap. Don't delay when it comes to goodness. Run towards it whether you have or you don't have. Allah has more. Allahu Akbar. Allah has more. This is why Allah tells us that wealth will not buy you sleep. Wealth will not buy you contentment. Wealth will not buy you happiness. There are certain priceless things only Allah controls. Subhanallah. And when He has given you wealth or good looks, or good health, or position, or education. He has given you that only as a test. If he wants, he can take it away overnight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So those who are arrogant, another quality of them, or if we want to search ourselves, if we have this quality, they threaten people and they blackmail them. Threatening and blackmailing is an offshoot of arrogance and pride. Why do we say this? Listen to what Allah says about the people of Shu'ayb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ الْمَلَأُ الَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا مِن قَوْمِهِ لَنُخْرِجَنَّكَ يَا شُعَيْبُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَكَ مِن قَرْيَتِنَا أَوْ لَتَعُودُنَّ فِي مِلَّتِنَا The haughty, the arrogant, 
those who were proud from the people of Shu'ayb, from the people whom Shu'ayb was sent to, may peace be upon him. They said to Shu'ayb, O oh Shu'ayb, we are going to kick you out of our city if you don't turn back to our religion. Come back. And they went to all those who adopted the message of Shu'ayb, may peace be upon him, telling them that if you are not going to come back to your original faith, you watch out, you see what I am going to do to you. Now, let us for a moment, obviously this is a lesson from the Qur'an, let us bring it to our lives. How many times have we heard people say, if you don't do this, watch out, I will fix you. These words are the beginning of arrogance. If not, they are an offshoot of arrogance and pride. I will show him, I will destroy him, I will fix you up. I am going to show you what I will do to you. Why? If you don't do what I want you to do. Look at this quality. The reason I am raising this is for us to look in our own hearts, myself included. I need to look at my own heart. Do I use threatening terms? If I do, today is the day I promise Allah I am going to stop. I don't want to be resurrected standing in one line with Iblis. No, I want to be standing in one line with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here is his message. How can I threaten people, whether it is my family, whether it is my wife or husband, or the in-laws, or other human beings, or those who work for me, or general friends, or people of the public, at school, or outside the school. Why must I threaten people to say, if you don't do this, watch out, I'm going to show you. I will destroy your life. I will fix you up. What type of quality is this? This is arrogance. If this is not pride and arrogance, then what do we think is pride and arrogance? May Allah help me to identify my bad qualities. And may Allah help me to eradicate it and every single one of us here as well. I mean. So look at these bad habits and see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of the blackmailing and the threatening. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Those who want to follow the haughty and arrogant, they will be resurrected with them, even if they are weak. There are so many verses in the Quran which show this. There are people who are haughty. When they instruct you to do something wrong, do not do it. Because if you follow them on the day of Qiyamah, they will have their own babies to resolve or their own problems to resolve. You will have your own. Kullun yaqulu nafsi nafsi. Everybody is going to be worried about himself. So the weak people will go to those whom they followed to say, hey, we followed you. Can't you take a little bit of our punishment away? Wallahi, the answer will come, look, we are in our own mess here, please go and sort out your own problem. But in the dunya, you told us, you gave us guarantee that whatever you do, if we did, we would be successful. Where is our success? Look, we don't know anything about success. We are now in the life after death. Please go away. Don't burden us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from amongst those. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks of another quality that we need to be careful of. A very, very arrogant man was known as Fir'aun. Fir'aun, his arrogance led to the degree that he began to say, as we mentioned yesterday, that I am God. Ana rabbukumul a'la. I am the God, I am the highest. That, that is how arrogant he was. Yet he knew that he was just a mere human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of what he used to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ عَلَى فِي الْأَرْضِ وَجَعَلَ أَهْلَهَا شِيَعًا يَسْتَضْعِفُ طَائِفَةً مِّنْهُمْ يُذَبِّحُ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ وَيَسْتَحِي نِسَاءَهُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُفْسِدِينَ Allah says, Fir'aun, Fir'aun was very haughty on this earth, very arrogant, very proud. He divided his people or its people, the people on the earth. And he began to kill and destroy at his own discretion. He began to kill thinking that he is the one who controls death. He does not control death. Very simple proof of that is he died himself. Imagine a person saying, I control death like Namrud. Namrud at the time of Abraham, may peace be upon him, was a leader. He told Abraham that I control life and death. 
So Abraham said, no, you don't. He said, okay, wait one minute. Look, our young children will laugh at this. He said, bring me four prisoners who are supposed to be dying. Who are supposed to be dying. Death sentence. Two of them, he said, I free you. Right, look, I gave life. Look, I gave them life. What is that? You are such a big leader, such a big fool at the same time. Imagine. Allahu Akbar. I told you even the children are laughing. Does that mean you gave life? Bring a stone and tell it. Become living. And then when it becomes living, we will talk. Then we will talk. You are not the giver of this life. Then the other two, he instructed the executioner, saying, execute these two. They were executed. Look, I gave death. Yet Namrud died himself. Imagine. If you say you are giving life and death, why would you die? This is why we believe in Allah Hayyun La Yamut. Allah is alive, He does not die. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fir'aun, he began to kill and spread corruption on earth, and he was indeed a person who was very, very corrupt. So corruption is also a quality that is an offshoot of arrogance and pride. Corruption is a quality that is an offshoot of arrogance and pride. Why do we say this? Naturally, you need to reject justice in order to be corrupt. Corruption is a rejection of justice. Let me give you a simple example. Bribery. Bribery is an offshoot of arrogance because you are supposed to be working, so either supposed to be doing this or not supposed to be doing this. But if you accept a bribe to break the law, it means you are no longer worried about what is justice. You are no longer worried about what is right and wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from arrogance and pride. These are some of the roots that will then lead to full-blown pride, full-blown arrogance. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the people who have haughtiness in them, they have also a habit of planning and plotting and scheming. And their life rotates around planning, plotting. Against whom? Against anyone whom they feel will reach their level or against anyone whom they feel might go above them or against anyone whom they feel will take away either their power or their wealth. So sometimes you have a person, sometimes you have a person, and this is what we find, who is in business and he is small, he is trying to grow, he is trying to build his business. But what happens is, there are people in the same business who are very big, who don't allow him to come up. That is because they are arrogant. That is because they are haughty. The issue of having a cartel, don't allow him. He is growing, destroy his business. So they plan and plot every day, sending people to see who is going to come up like us. We don't want them to be like us. This is why Islam teaches us we are equal. When someone is having a business just like yours, thank Allah. Make dua for him and say, Ya Allah, this is a young Muslim or a young human being trying to earn halal. At least he is not stealing and pinching. Ya Allah, give him and give me as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. As the years are passing, more and more people have arrogance in them without knowing that we are actually arrogant. As the years and times are passing, more and more people are arrogant without knowing that they are arrogant. So it's important for us to know that there are people who plan and plot. Let me explain to you where this comes from. You see, when the messengers came, may peace be upon them, the people who were the leaders around at the time, in almost all the cases of every messenger, they felt threatened. The people felt threatened that my chair is going to go. Abu Jahl was the leader in Makkah. He felt that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is going to outseat him. So he said, no, this man must be nipped in the bud from now, go and kill him. Literally, they planned to kill him. When they realized that he is protected and he cannot be killed, they went to him and said, look, if you want the most beautiful of women, we will get you married to how many you like and who you like. If you want wealth, we will give you how much money you want. If you want leadership, we will make you our king. If you want power, we will give you authority. If you want whatever you want, we will give it to you. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam waited for them to finish. Then he said, can I say something? Yes. Wallahi, if you put the sun in my right hand, that's how much power you give me. And the moon in my left hand, I will never leave what I have been sent to 
relate to you. Subhanallah. So he did not succumb to pressure, never. Nor did any of the other messengers succumb to any form of pressure. These were the messengers. Now those people began to plan and plot because they were worried of their level and their wealth. Ultimately, they were the losers. And look at the companions, Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu, when he arrived in Medina Munawwara, when he did hijrah, he had left everything. And a lot of it was usurped also by the kuffar of Mecca. Wallahi, he became in no time one of the richest of the companions. So rich, so wealthy, it is difficult to explain how much wealth he had. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, he got so much wealth that he was also called Uthman Ghani. I think a lot of us would know that name, Uthman Ghani. Which means he was rich, he was wealthy. He bought over one well, which was for the benefit of the Muslims. But some, just a little bit before that, some time before that, he had almost nothing. Because he made hijrah penniless, without anything. So Allah is the giver. We must never ever be arrogant and haughty. Never plan and plot in a very bad way. Allah says in Surah Fatir, Allah is describing the bad people, saying that they are haughty on this earth and they have the bad planning, evil plan. Allah says, The bad plan does not affect anyone besides those who deserve it. Those who made the plan, it will rebound on them. So when someone has a bad plan, an evil plan to destroy, it is through that plan that Allah will destroy them. Don't think otherwise. I want to give you one example that we would all know. Joseph, may peace be upon him, Yusuf alayhi salam. His brothers planned to bring him down. It was through the plan of the brothers that Allah brought him up. Had they not put him in the well, he was not going to be picked up by certain people. If he was not picked up by those people, he was not going to be sold into the house of the minister. If he was not going to be sold in the house of the minister, he was not going to go to prison. If he did not go to prison, he was not going to emerge the leader. He emerged a leader, it was a plan of Allah. When he was the big leader, his brothers had to come to beg from him. They wanted him to be down under their feet and Allah raised him to such a degree that they had to come to beg at his feet for food to eat. Allahu Akbar. Look at this. So a bad plan might seem like it is successful momentarily, but long term it will definitely be unsuccessful. This is a warning for those who are arrogant and it is good news for those who are oppressed that don't worry, it is a matter of time, bear patience, maybe five years, ten years. In the case of Joseph, may peace be upon him, Yusuf alayhi salam, forty years later, according to some narrations. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let injustice go unabated. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And Allah calls them criminals. Allah says, those who have pride in them, they are criminals because that is something that is unacceptable, totally unacceptable. To reject the truth and to despise others is a sign of criminal behavior. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Jathiyah, أَفَلَمْ تَكُنْ آيَاتِي تُتْلَى عَلَيْكُمْ فَاسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ وَكُنْتُمْ قَوْمًا مُجْرِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He will ask those who were haughty, were our verses not recited to you, you decided to reject them, and you were too arrogant to accept them, so you became criminals? Look at this. So a person with, arrogant, with arrogance and with pride is criminal, or will soon become like a criminal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Then Allah says, there comes a time when they lose the balance. A person with pride and arrogance, one who rejects the truth and wants to despise others and belittle people, there will come a time when that person will lose the sense of distinguishing between right and wrong. They will not be able to tell the difference between left and right, right and wrong, darkness and light. They will lose all form of credibility and all forms of understanding. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. 
Allah says, when they see the path of goodness, they turn away from it. And when they see the path of evil, they will walk towards it and consider it their own path. That is because they deny the verses of Allah and they want to be oblivious of the verses of Allah, the signs of Allah, the reminders of Allah. Allah Almighty sends reminders to us in our lives every so often. Every so often there is a reminder. Either our health fails us, family members, something happens, we suffer loss at business, we suffer some form of accident. These are all reminders from Allah. They are tests from the Almighty to remind us where are you going? You should know who you are, where you are, how you are being kept and who is keeping you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us in a good condition. So Allah says that they lose all forms of direction to the degree that they begin to be wasteful. Wasteful meaning they blow money here and there, they blow wealth. Where they are supposed to spend, they don't spend. So if there is a masjid being built or a good cause, someone wants to maybe engage in a very good cause, they go and say, look, brother, we need a little bit of wealth. Multi-millionaire. He will say, no, I don't want. I don't see the light in what you are doing. Not I don't see. Allah blocked your eyes. My father always says that don't go begging to people to say, please, this is the cause of Allah. Come and spend here. You know, there is a madrasa here. There is this. Maybe Allah does not want their money. Maybe it is not clean enough to be spent on such a good cause. So leave them. So an arrogant person, if we take a look at them, what we will find is their arrogance and their pride, because they reject the truth, they will not be able to see the truth even when it comes from different directions. I was saying moments ago that we are taught, don't go begging to people to say, please spend in this masjid and this madrasa. These are the causes of Allah. Those who are wealthy and they have eyes, they have seen the cause or you have explained to them what it is. They will come on their own to say, I would like to spend here. I would like to spend here. But sometimes you have a wealthy person, he will blow money on casinos. Where you are not supposed to blow money, he will blow. And he will blow money for so many wrong things. But one right thing, one correct thing, he won't be able to spend even this much. Why? Allah says, I have rejected him. That's the reason. I have rejected him. It's not him. His money is not fit for me and you. It's fit for casinos. Then when all the haram money is finished in gambling, casinos, prostitution, alcohol, big parties and so on, then maybe when he makes tawbah, well, one day when he comes back to earth, we will start to use his money again. The reason I am saying this is because each one of us needs to ask ourselves, how much money am I spending in the cause? And let me look for the correct cause to spend my money. Let me look for the correct cause. Even if your salary is small, even if you consider yourself from a lower class of income, no problem. Take out a few hundred rupees, no problem, and give them to a good cause. Allah will multiply your wealth. And Allah will assist you. There is a story, I don't have time to go into it now, but one of the companions of the Prophet, may peace be upon him, he came to the Prophet and he says, make dua for me that I get wealth, that I am wealthy. So Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him that I fear if I make dua for you, you will have so much wealth, you will forget us. He said, no, I promise, if I have wealth, I will spend in the path of Allah and I will spend in this cause and that cause. Do you know? The Prophet says, Oh Allah, give this man wealth. The same day his wealth began to multiply. I told you I don't have time to go into the details. Very interesting story. So much so that he became one of the wealthiest. From five salah, he began to read three. From three, he was coming for Jumu'ah. From one Jumu'ah, he stopped coming. When the verses of zakat were revealed, 
Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam sent someone to him to say, this is the verse of Allah, we are here to take some of your wealth. Wallahi, the answer he gave them, he said, who are you? What do you think you want? I got this wealth with my effort. You think I'm going to pay you? Go back. So Allah revealed a verse to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ عَاهَدَ اللَّهَ لَإِنْ آتَانَا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ لَنَصَّدَّقَنَّ وَلَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ فَلَمَّا آتَاهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ بَخِلُوا بِهِ وَتَوَلَّوْا وَهُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ Allah says, there are some people who promised you that when Allah gives them, they will spend in the cause of Allah. Then when they got and they were given, they turned away and they forgot their promise. And Allah says, we have written hypocrisy upon their hearts until the day of Qiyamah. So then Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he knew already that this man must have rejected. The verse was revealed in Medina. These people were sent just outside Medina to collect the wealth. So when they came back, he was already informed of what had happened. He said, don't worry, leave him. One of his relatives who was sitting there went to him and told him, you know what? There is a verse of the Quran about you. Imagine one verse of the Quran about you. He said, no, can't be. He quickly took some wealth and he went to Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, look, I brought my zakat. He said, sorry, I have been refused to accept it from you. I'm not allowed to accept this wealth. It is from Allah. You will have to wait until revelation comes. When it comes, I will accept this wealth. Wallahi, that Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed him that up to the time when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left us, Nothing was revealed. So he did not accept money from that man. Nothing. And his money was growing and growing. So he decided to call some people who were ready to accept the money. Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. He said, no, I have a plan. Let us build another masjid just outside Masjid Quba. We will build a big masjid and we will call people and we will lead them away from Muhammad and his companions. May peace be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions. So they built masjid known as Masjid Dirar. It was funded by the same man. Funded by. Look at how the man's wealth, because of his arrogance, denial of the truth, lack of fulfillment of a promise, is to deny the truth. That arrogance, because of that, Allah rejected his wealth in the right cause. It was used in the wrong cause. He couldn't even see. He couldn't even understand. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa left us, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu took over, he came running with a lot of wealth. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, if the Prophet did not take, I cannot take. The same applies, Umar ibn al-Khattab, in his time, he came and he, he was Amir for a long time, for 10 years. Umar al-Farooq radiallahu anhu, he said, those before me didn't take, I cannot take. Imagine, look at how he was rejected. This is why I say that when a person is rejected, you will never be able to get them to use in the right cause. Then you will hear that they went with thousands of dollars to the wrong cause and they gave it away. They gave it away, but they cannot spend on the good cause. So we need to ask ourselves, where do we spend our money? Look for the best place to give it. Look hard and ask yourself, is this a good cause? Then we will give inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Another very, very bad quality of those who have arrogance. They do not consider other people as people sometimes. I told you moments ago, they don't listen to their opinions. Not only that, they don't even consider them human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding Fir'aun, when Moses and Aaron, may peace be upon them, Musa and, and Harun alayhim as -salam, went to Pharaoh, to Fir'aun, his people said, أَنُؤْمِنُ لِبَشَرَيْنِ مِثْلِنَا وَقَوْمُهُمَا لَنَا عَابِدُونَ Should we accept the message of human beings like this when their people are our slaves? You see, Banu Israel were slaves. These people are slaves. How can we accept their message? 
Wallahi, even if your domestic worker comes to you to warn you about the verse of Allah, you need to cry on the musalla to say, Ya Allah, I thank you for sending someone to show me my bad habit, to show me my bad quality. He might be or she might be a worker of mine, but today they have corrected me. Ya Allah, I thank you for this. This is the quality of a good Muslim. Today we are turning away from these qualities. And this is why we taste failure in life. People are saying Islam is very bad. Islam is not bad. The Muslims are not following Islam. So the Muslims are presenting the wrong image. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to correct this. Then Allah says another quality of arrogance is before the person accepts what is correct, he asks to do something that is almost impossible. To do something almost impossible. What do we mean by this? When the messengers were sent to their people, the haughty from amongst them, like Fir'aun and Haman and Qarun and these people who were very big and high, they used to ask for impossible things. Abu Jahal and them, they told the messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we want you to bring a miracle. What do we want you to do? We want the heaven to open and we want you to go up walking. We want to see it happening in front of us. It's impossible. Or it is possible, Allah says. But if we do that, what will happen? You will ask for another sign. Like when the moon, they, they asked for the sign and the moon was split. When Muhammad, peace be upon him, pointed at the moon and it split into two pieces. They said, no, we don't. That is magi magic, magician. So if we do it, it's a problem. If we don't do it, it's a problem. That is a sign of arrogance. You see, they, you, you are in a lose-lose situation. They want to be in win-win all the time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about that. Like the verses I read today, I commenced with, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْجُونَ لِقَاءَنَا لَوْلَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْنَا الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَوْ نَرَى رَبَّنَا Those who are not looking forward to the meeting with Allah, because they are too comfortable here in the dunya. Allah says, they ask that, why don't the angels come down, we want to see them, or send Allah, we want to see him, let us talk to Allah. Then we will listen to the message. Allah says, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You want Allah to come. Allah says at the beginning of the eighth part of the Quran, وَلَوْ أَنَّنَا نَزَّلْنَا إِلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ وَكَلَّمَهُمُ الْمَوْتَى It's a long verse. Allah says, even if we sent the angels to them, and even if the dead had to speak to them, and even if everything that has died in the past had to be resurrected and speak to them, they would not believe unless Allah intended their belief. They would still deny. So let us soften our hearts. Let us always soften our hearts towards that which is correct and that which is good, because this is the way we will achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, Arrogant people, people who deny the truth, they know what is the truth in most cases. They know it, they recognize it, but they deny it. They deny it. People know the verses of Allah, like the laws of inheritance. It is prohibited to just draw up a will according to your own whims and fancies. You first need to learn what Allah said about inheritance. It is farad. It is compulsory, it is obligatory when you have wealth that you study the laws of inheritance. If you don't, it will be severe. May Allah protect us. So people know the verses of Allah regarding inheritance, but they still deny. They say, no, I don't want. What is that? Allah says, يَعْرِفُونَ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يُنْكِرُونَهَا They know the gift of Allah. But then on top of that, they deny. This is why Allah tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He says, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ إِنَّهُ لَيَحْزُنُكَ الَّذِي يَقُولُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكَ وَلَكِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْحَدُونَ 
Allah says, we know that it is hurting you what they are saying. What they are uttering is hurting you. They are uttering against you and against the deen and against Allah. We know that these words are hurting you. We want to tell you that they are not in disagreement. They know, their hearts know that what you are saying is the truth. But they are denying out of arrogance. Look at how Allah makes them deny. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when a person is arrogant, it is very, very rare that they will turn to Allah. It is very rare that they will engage in tawbah. Why? Because they are happy with their condition. They are very happy where they are sitting. And Allah says, if we want, we can fix them. And we will fix them. But we give them a time. Because if they turn on their own, it is better for them. If they turn before it is too late, it is better for them. There is no point in waiting for punishment. Like the people of Quraysh. What did they tell Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? In kana hadha huwa al-haqqa min indik fa'amtir alayna hijaratan min as-samaa fa'u'tina bi'adhabin alim If what you have come with is the truth then let rocks fall from heaven to harm us or bring us severe punishment, then we will accept. So look at how foolish they are. Their brains are blocked. If it was someone else who was more clever, they would say, if it is the truth, let gold appear in our houses. They would ask for something good. If what you are saying is right, then let us all become rich, then we will accept. It is more more intellectual to say that. But look at how foolish they were. They said, if what you are saying is the truth, let punishment come to us. How can you ask that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from arrogance. May He protect us from haughtiness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is how they do not want to accept and they don't want to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Noah, may peace be upon him, he called his people for 950 years. He told his people, look, come towards Allah, stop doing this, stop doing that. They didn't want to listen. Oh, Nuh, who do you think you are? 950 years later, Nuh alayhi salam complained to Allah. And Nuh alayhi salatu was salam told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنِّي كُلَّمَا دَعَوْتُهُمْ لِتَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ جَعَلُوا أَصَابِعَهُمْ فِي آذَانِهِمْ Every time I call them towards goodness and to ask them to turn to you, O Allah, and to repent to you, they put their fingers in their ears. They don't want to listen to the truth. And they are proud and their pride is increasing. They are giving birth to children who are worse than them. They are giving birth to children who are worse than them. Ya Allah. Look at the complaint. What did Allah do? Allah says, Oh no, don't worry. We will now destroy them completely. All of them. We have answered your request. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed the people of Nuh in a manner that no one before them or after them was destroyed in such a wholesale manner. When I say wholesale, I mean all of them. One time, the whole world was destroyed with flood. Nowadays we hear of floods here and there. May Allah safeguard us from flooding. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant ease to those who are suffering due to the flooding. There are people on the globe who are suffering up to today because of the tsunami that occurred five, six years back. They are suffering up to today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bear witness that we have remembered them tonight. Allah make things easy for them. I mean. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then warns us about them. Muhammad peace be upon him says that I will make dua. I will make dua for forgiveness for these people. Certain people who are bad. Certain people who are bad. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what is the point of seeking forgiveness for the one who doesn't want forgiveness himself? You know when a child does something wrong in school, the child has done something wrong in school, and the father goes to apologize, to say, I'm very sorry for what my son did. That apology means nothing if the son himself did not apologize. 
The son says, no, I don't want to apologize. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm not worried. I didn't do anything wrong. I called the teacher a fool because the teacher is a fool. Why must I say I'm sorry? So if the father goes a hundred times to say, I'm sorry for what my son did, will it hold any value? No. Because the child needs to say, I called the teacher a fool, but I am a bigger fool because it is my teacher. Allahu Akbar. So a teacher who is a fool, whom I believe is a fool, can only teach me how to be a bigger fool. You see? So the child needs to admit that I was wrong to say this. Then, if the father comes and says, look, I apologize on behalf of my child, the headmaster will say, no problem, don't worry, problem sorted. So the same applies to the hypocrites and those who are arrogant. Allah says, إِسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ أَوْ لَا تَسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ إِن تَسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ سَبْعِينَ مَرَّةً فَلَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, whether you seek forgiveness for them or do not seek forgiveness for them, it is not going to help them, Allah will not forgive them. Even if you seek forgiveness for them 70 times, it's not going to assist them. Because they themselves must seek forgiveness. When a hypocrite does not admit that he is wrong, how is the whole world's dua for him going to help him? This is why the kuffar, we make dua for their guidance. But if there are evil people, for example, sometimes, you will have definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishing them. And Allah says, your dua for that one who has rejected us cannot help because he has rejected us himself totally. If he shows the signs of remorse, we will definitely then be able to forgive him. So this is something we need to be careful of. When arrogance creeps into the heart, we then tend not to seek forgiveness. And I want to raise a very, very important point. An arrogant person does not say, I am sorry. No, they don't. Arrogant person is too proud to say, I am sorry. So we need to ask ourselves, do we apologize to our wives, to our husbands, to our parents, to our children, to our family members, to those we work for, to those who work for us, to those at the schools or to others? Do we ever say, I am very sorry, I really am sorry, what I did is wrong. We will not be able to say, I am sorry, unless we think about our own condition in our hearts. And if we think of our condition and we find fault, we will say, I am sorry. And a higher level is to apologize sometimes when you are not even wrong, just to diffuse the situation. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes when you know it is a petty matter, and when you know it is a very big, it is going to have very big positive results, if I say, I am sorry, go out and apologize, say, I am sorry, I was wrong, I will not repeat it again, and so on. Even though you might know you are right, subhanallah. Think about what I have said tonight. Sometimes to solve a family problem which has been going on for 10 years, 20 years, it requires one man who has a coconut. When I say coconut, I mean very hard to crack. To come out and say, look, I'm sorry. Really, I'm sorry. Why do we need to have coconut which is not cracked? If a coconut is not cracked, you will not enjoy the juice. If a coconut is not cracked, you will not enjoy the coconut inside, the beauty of it. So first crack that nut, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good nuts, good coconuts, good juice inshallah, and all forms of benefit. Yes, I might have said it lightly, but the lesson is very great. Why don't we come, off, come forward and apologize? And a lot of the times we are wrong and we don't want to apologize. It happens to women folk, it happens to men folk. Shaitan comes to us and says, no. I'm not going to say I'm sorry. For what? I'm not going to say that. Why? Who? You think I'm going to say sorry to that man? Or to this woman? No, no, not me. Wallahi, that is like Iblis. That is what Iblis told Allah. Me? Prostrate to him? No, not me. Exactly the same words. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says another quality. They think they can get away with this arrogance. Allah says they will never be able to get away. Listen to what Allah says. وَقَارُونَ وَفِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ These are the names of people who were big criminals, very arrogant. They rejected the truth and despised everybody around them. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ مُوسَىٰ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ 
فاستكبروا في الأرض وما كانوا سابقين When Moses came to them with clear signs, they were arrogant. They spread corruption on the earth. They were arrogant and they despised the people on the earth. And Allah says, they were not going to escape from us. فَكُلَّنْ أَخَذْنَا بِذَنْبِهِ Every one of them, we punished them due to that sin of theirs. What type of punishment? Allah says, فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِ حَاصِبًا Some of them, we sent to them wind, very strong wind. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَخَذَتْهُ الصَّيْحَةِ Some of them, we sent to them the tremors which resulted in loud screaming and yelling. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ خَسَفْنَا بِهِ الْأَرْضِ Some of them, we caused the earth to eat them up. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَغْرَقُنَا And some of them, we drowned them totally. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَظْلِمَهُمْ Allah says, Allah did not oppress them. وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ They oppressed themselves with all these bad habits, starting with the quality of arrogance and pride. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all forms of protection. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how He will call the people on the day of Qiyamah, how they will debate with one another, as I said at the beginning of this talk, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who are arrogant with the others. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَبَرَزُوا لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا They will all come in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَقَالَ الضُّعَفَاءُ لِلَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا The weak ones will tell those whom they followed. The weak ones will tell those who were proud and arrogant. إِنَّا كُنَّا لَكُمْ تَبَعًا We were following you. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُغْنُونَ عَنَّا مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ We were following you in the dunya. Today are you going to take a little bit of the punishment away from us because we were your followers? And the Quran says, قَالَ الَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا إِنَّا كُلٌّ فِيهَا Those haughty will say that we are all together today in the punishment. And you know there are some powerful verses that Allah speaks about in Surah Al-A'raf where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the people of Jannah and the people of Jahannam will have a discussion with one another. So the people of Jannah will ask the people of Jahannam. Listen to the verse. I think I must read it. It is extremely powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Al-A'raf, and these verses we need to listen to them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing what is going to come. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the people of Jannah will ask the people of Jahannam, we have found, وَجَدْنَا مَا وَعَدَنَا رَبُّنَا حَقَّا فَهَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ مَا وَعَدَ رَبُّكُمْ حَقَّا we found what Allah promised us to be true. Have you found what Allah promised you to be true as well? They will say, Naam, yes. فَأَذَّنَ مُؤَذِّنُ بَيْنَهُمْ أَلَّعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ Allah says, A caller will call out that curse be upon those who are oppressors, those who are disbelievers, those who have turned away from the signs of Allah. Then the people of Jahannam will call out to the people of Jannah. The people in the fire will call out to the people of paradise. Can you please pour on us some water? or a little bit of what Allah has provided you in terms of positive liquid, any form of liquid that will help us today. And these people of Jannah will say, إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَرَّمَهُمَا عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ Allah has indeed prohibited any form of liquid or water for us to pour upon you on this day, those who disbelieved and those who denied 
the messengers and the messages that came from those messengers, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us protection. And this is why it is important and I will end with this for us to all make dua to Allah to protect us not only from being from the arrogant but from being in the company of the arrogant and from being affected by those who are arrogant and proud. And if we are making dua to ask for something, we should be conscious of it in our hearts. Listen to this dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Moses, may peace be upon him. He saw Fir'aun, he saw Pharaoh, and he saw what arrogance Pharaoh was in. And he said, Allah says in the Quran, وَقَالَ مُوسَىٰ إِنِّي عُذْتُ بِرَبِّي وَرَبِّكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مُتَكَبِّرٍ لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِيَوْمِ الْحِسَابِ Moses, he said, O oh my Rabb, I seek your protection. I seek your protection from all those who are arrogant and haughty, those who do not believe in the day of accounting. This also shows us another quality of arrogance and pride, or the offshoot of arrogance and pride. People become such that they don't believe that there is a day of accounting. They don't believe that there is a day of Qiyamah. They might say it, but they don't believe it. Their actions are proving otherwise. So it's important for us to make dua. Ya Allah, protect us from arrogance. Ya Allah, protect us from those who are arrogant. Help us, grant us the ability, the ability to understand where it is coming from. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin in Nabi al ummi wa ala alihi wa sallim taslima. Ya Allah, we ask you goodness. Ya Allah, you are our owner, creator, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector. Ya Allah, you are in control of our lives, Ya Allah. You are in control of the life of every creature of yours, Ya Allah. You are in absolute control, Ya Allah. You are the magnificent, Ya Allah. You are the owner, the most forgiving, most merciful, Ya Allah. You are the owner of the day of judgment, Ya Allah. You are the owner of absolutely everything in existence, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, you own us, Ya Allah. We worship you, Ya Allah. We put our heads down on the ground for none other than you, Ya Allah. We adore you, Ya Allah. Forgive us, Ya Allah. Forgive us and protect us from arrogance, Ya Allah. Help us to distinguish between arrogance, Ya Allah, and your obedience, Ya Allah. And keep us in your obedience, Ya Allah, and protect us from that which is full of pride. Ya Allah, help us so we do not belittle other people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us so we do not despise other people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us so that we do not reject your signs, your verses, Ya Allah. We do not reject the truth, Ya Allah. Tonight, Ya Allah, we've heard so many qualities and so many signs that are evil, Ya Allah. Help us to be protected from that, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to be from amongst the good, Ya Allah. Resurrect us with the prophets and don't resurrect us with Fir'aun and Qarun and Haman and Ubay ibn Khalaf, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect us and our offspring, Ya Allah. Our children, keep them on deen, Ya Allah. Help us, Ya Allah, to dress appropriately, Ya Allah. Help us to become beloved to you, Ya Allah. Love us, Ya Allah, for indeed we love you. Ya Allah, we are trying our best to please you, Ya Allah. Life is a challenge, Ya Allah, as you know. Life is a test, Ya Allah, as you have decreed, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make these tests easy for us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, sometimes life is so difficult, Ya Allah, but we know with your help, with your assistance, we will pull through, Ya Allah. Help us through life, Ya Allah. Help us so that we can become good people, Ya Allah. Help us so that we do not look down upon anyone, Ya Allah. Help us to respect others when we speak to them, Ya Allah. Help us to respect others when we communicate with them, when we mix with them, Ya Allah. Help us to be an asset in our families, in our homes, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us in every single way, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect us, make us good people, Ya Allah. Help us to speak in a nice, in good language to our wives, to our children, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we do not deny any of your verses, any of your signs, Ya Allah. Make us not from amongst those who are arrogant, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we do not despise anyone. We will not despise anyone from this day on, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect us, Ya Allah. Make us good people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, the day we die, we will all be enshrouded in one type of enshrouding, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, have mercy on us on that day, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us paradise, Ya Allah. Resurrect us with the good people, not with the bad, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us from those who can spend in the correct cause, not in the bad cause, Ya Allah. 
Ya Allah, help us in every single way, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we make dua, Ya Allah, we ask you to bless our offspring, the women of this ummah, the men of this ummah, Ya Allah, those who are suffering across the globe, Ya Allah, those who are sick and ill, grant them cure, Ya Allah, those who have passed away, grant them mercy, Ya Allah, the day you take us away, have mercy on us as well, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you all the goodness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked you. And we seek protection from all the evil that he has sought protection from. Until Musta'an, you are the one we seek help from. Alayka al Ya Allah, all du'as return to you, Ya Allah. You are the only one we can raise our hands to, Ya Allah. And we can ask, Ya Allah, knowing that you will respond, Ya Allah. From amongst us, they are the old, they are the elderly, they are men, they are women, Ya Allah. They are those who are going through health conditions, Ya Allah. We have all raised our hands, Ya Allah. We are asking you, Ya Allah, we know you will never return our hands without responding, Ya Allah. Grant us goodness, Ya Allah. We all have different difficulties, different issues, different situations, different problems, Ya Allah. You are aware of our condition in full, even better than we are aware, Ya Allah. Help us through our conditions. May create ease for us, Ya Allah. Create solution to our problems, Ya Allah. Create ease to our difficulties, Ya Allah. Create goodness in our situations, Ya Allah. Grant us spouses who will be the coolness of our eyes, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, those who are not married, grant them spouses who will be the coolness of their eyes, Ya Allah. Those who are, keep them happy in your obedience, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we know that whenever we obey you, Ya Allah, you will still test us, but you will grant us contentment, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you that contentment, Ya Allah. Make us those who are obedient, Ya Allah. Help us to learn lessons by watching others, by listening to your verses, Ya Allah, by reading the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by going through the lives of all the messengers, Ya Allah. We don't want to be on the wrong side, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, resurrect us with those who are good, Ya Allah. Alayka al-balahu, wa la hawla, wa la quwata illa billahi al-aliyy al-azim. Rabbana taqabbal minna, innaka anta al-sami'u al-alim. Watub alayna, innaka anta al-tawabu al-rahim. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-musarina, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر